Welcome back to another edition of the Night Report Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie O'Leary, and Rutgers beat reporter, Alec Krauthamel. We're going to discuss everything that happened last night at the Rutgers charity scrimmage against St. John's. Rutgers fell 91-85 in a really exciting game. Um, Rutgers was leading for most of the game, fell apart down the stretch, but a ton of positives to take away from it, a ton of hype around this game. Um, I think Jordan Ozer uh, posted something on Twitter about how this is the most media requests ever for a Rutgers home game. And it's only a preseason matchup. Just kind of give you an idea of the, the media attention it got. We'll have a lot of uh, coverage of what was said on social media, uh, what we thought about the game, any superlatives that we have. I will get into that and more. But first, this podcast is presented to you by Night and Day Apparel. Get ready for football and tailgating season with Night and Day Apparel and also basketball season now. Uh, our apparel is designed to keep you comfortable and stylish from the pregame excitement to the final whistle. Whether you're grilling in the parking lot or cheering from the stands, our high-quality gear has you covered with unbeatable comfort and team spirit. Use our promo code RUCKERSRIVALS to get 10% off your purchase. Score big this season and keep chopping with night and day apparel. We're also brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. Bet Online is every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during games. If you think you know your stuff, get in on our $200,000 mega contest and pick five games against the spread each week for your chance at weekly prizes and a share of $200,000. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker. Or unwind with one of our 150 slot games. Head to the website today and get in on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. All right, guys. It's 91 to 85. Uh, I was going through some of the, the Rutgers press superlatives after the game. I don't know why I keep saying superlatives. Um, 85 matches the regular season high from last year. Uh, they did score 87 in an overtime game. Uh, 44 points would have been the second most points scored at halftime last year. We had one game where we scored 46. Overall, the offense is night and day different. Now you see that we did there uh, from last year. Up they just home. have a, a, a plethora of guys who can hit tough shots, guys that can hit open shots. Free throws were much improved. Like there's just so much positive to talk about the offense that we saw last night. Um, Rich, what was like the one thing that you took away from this game that really impressed you? Um that even despite Ace Bailey having a slow start, he picked it back up and he proved his worth. Um, between him and Dylan, I think they are exactly who we thought they were. They are two superstars in the making, or you can even argue they already are superstars. College game against some veteran, uh, well, veteran-laden St. John's team, and they didn't back down at all. They were ready to go. These guys, I don't think there's any like gelling. There's not, I mean, a little bit, I guess, as a team as a whole, but these guys are ready to play an NBA as of tomorrow. If you had, if I had to say, I think either of them could start on NBA teams tomorrow, to be honest. They are, they are just that good. Dylan is just magnificent with the ball. There's so many things you can say about his game. I thought he played his game almost perfectly, to be honest. And Ace, like I said, some struggles early, but. Complete bounce back. He's going to give people heart attacks this year, though, because his shot selection is so piss poor. But it goes in, and it's like, oh, you know what? Fuck it. Like that that one three that went kind of semi viral was it was a transition three. It was one on three because he was he beat everyone else up the court, and he just pulls with the defender in his face and just nails it. And it's going to be so exciting watching these two play. Um, wins or losses, even some of the people on our boards um, have said like this loss is just like so exciting to watch it means that Rutgers basketball is going to be so fun to watch despite the record and those two are just superstars and you're going to see them playing basketball for a long long time how about you Alec what was something that uh really stuck out to you about this game I mean obviously the two freshmen the way that they were able to stand out like I he started out 0 for 4 he finished 8 for 18 so he went I mean 8 for 14 after that obviously um, just the way he was able to get into a shot, like we talked about, I believe after media day, when we saw practice, just the, abil his ability to get into his shot so quickly. And he has such a high release point. He's so he's just taller than everyone else that's guarding him. I mean, it really makes him, if, if he's on almost unstoppable at, at the, uh, on the pull-up game. Um, like Richie said, I think Dylan played a really good game. He controlled the pace. Um, some of the other guys I want to shout out. Uh, PJ Hayes, I think Rutgers fans are already going to already probably already do, but are going to love oh, yeah. him. I mean, he kind of provides the edge to this team. Um, he's got a little bit of I, I want to say kind of like a Cam Spencer ish 
type of thing to him. Yeah, it's um, diet cam for sure. It, yeah, exactly. Um, I thought he, I mean, he was perfect from the field and from the free throw line, uh, two for two from three as well. So that's, it's a big plus, um, May not show it in, in some of the scoring statistics, but I thought Jordan Durkak played a heck of a game. He only had four points on one of seven shooting, but he did have seven rebounds and three assists. Uh, his defense and effort level were off the charts, and I think that's what people mainly expected when he came in. Uh, I was really impressed with his passing in the open floor. Like some of the passes he was getting in transition, he had a really nice one to Ogbole before the half, I believe, um, where he just whipped it over to him on a bounce pass and caught him in stride, and he, and he converted on the layup. Um I was very impressed with him. I really think he can, if he can improve his shooting, his shooting was definitely a little bit rough and missed both threes he took. Um, but if he can make even, say, one three a game or something like that, he can really be a huge connector piece to this team. Even if he doesn't, he can still he still has that skill set. Um, just going through some of the other guys, I thought Tyson Acuff, he looked like a guy who got cleared for practice a couple days ago, good and bad. Um, he struggled a little bit on, in the, what, three minutes that we saw, but, I mean, it's not unexpected considering he's still getting back up to form. Um, but it's good to see him dressed and good to get him out there. Uh, just looking through some of the other guys. Zach Martini, uh, he had three offensive rebounds in 11 minutes. He didn't play a ton, especially in that first half, but the second half we saw him at the five a little bit more. I was very impressed with his rebounding. Uh, just, you know, always knows where to be on the floor, always follows the ball. Um, I mean, these are all things that we expected uh, coming in for him. Um, Lathan Somerville only played seven minutes, but I thought he looked – the one shot he hit was very nice. Um, yep. Jamichael Davis, he – Played very uh, aggressive and, and took initiative a lot, both in a positive and, and not so great sense. Positive, I thought his defense looked improved from last year. He's at the point of attack a lot stronger. Uh, he can really guard multiple positions now, in, in not just the smaller guys, the smaller, quicker guys. Uh, on offense, he's trying to get a little bit too much at the rim a little bit. If I, I would say he shot three for nine from the floor. He did hit a three, so that's good. Um, I just thought he was a little bit too bold uh, going up at the rim at times, but... I'm sure that'll iron out as the season went on. But, yeah, I mean, the defense and rebounding, it, it the rebounding in particular does worry me a little bit. Yeah. But when you score 85 points, I mean, you're doing something right. Yeah, we'll definitely get into that as a key negative takeaway um, because I think everybody who watched that game was a little concerned with the, the rebounding situation. Um, I thought they just, especially the young guys, showed an incredible amount of poise. Like, they didn't look like they were playing their first game in college in terms of in front of an, app, an actual uh, crowd against the borderline top 25 team in St. John's. Like Dylan was regularly like unaffected by double teams, making good passes, breaking the press ace. You know, he was getting guarded by, you know, some really experienced guys getting guarded mm -hmm. tough and like getting to shots anyway, um, uh, through contact. Um, I think they probably need to get the ball to PJ Hayes more. Um, it seemed like some of the, the offensive stuff kind of got stodgy in the second half. I don't know if that was fatigue. I know that once Dylan got four fouls, he had to play a lot more timidly. Um, and mm -hmm. they weren't really shifting help to him when his defender or when his uh, <clears throat> when the guy he was guarding would like get to the hole or you know, he just basically had to back off a lot. Um, but just in general, like the shot making, I'll say it again, like it is such a refreshing uh, the thing to see when you can just see an offense that is fluid and gets into good looks and is able to drive and kick and just like everything we've wanted, we saw in game one on offense. So I'm just, I'm really excited because defense is half of it is just knowing where you're supposed to be on the court at the right time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, how you're supposed to, you know, sh uh, you know, switch off people, you know, how you're supposed to go in either underneath the screen or on top of the screen, like, that stuff's teachable. And I think if I had to, you know, put truth serum into Steve Peichel, this is the kind of loss you would want where they played really well. They had a lead, they played from mm -hmm. in front for a while and then they got sloppy and it slipped away because he'll be able to teach a lot better off this than if they would have won by 15, because then you kind of That's think right. like, Oh yeah, we're, you know, we're ranked 25th. They were supposed to be really good and we kind of blew them out. But because they kind of, had a lot of positives and it saw it slip away. I think this will be something they can really learn a lot from. So um, any other like standout positives before we get into the stuff that uh, definitely needs to get cleaned up? Um, I mean, I think it's, it's interesting because this rotation isn't 
what I think you're going to see during the season. I think once Acuff's yeah. healthy, he's either a starter or your sixth man. And that's your th- probably maybe your third your third best scoring option too. Um I I think that Durkak showed a lot of effort, shows showed that he's going to get minutes this year, which I I didn't really think going into the year. I didn't think I didn't know yeah, how he was much he'd get. Third on the team with minutes. He was yeah. played 30 minutes last night. Yeah. No, I mean I thought overall the offense looked phenomenal. Um it's just there's a lot of things that still like you said have to be cleaned up, but for the most part, like PJ Hayes fits like a glove. Didn't miss a goddamn shot all game. Like he's, <laughs> his shooting is just imma- immaculate. Like you, you got to set more screens for him. I don't. I don't want to talk about the negatives yet and like jump into it. But um, Lathan in the limited minutes he got looked pretty good. That <laughs> that th- that uh, what is it? That fadeaway like mid range shot. I'm like yeah. every. I, I think I said it to Alec next to me. I was just like, dude, no, no, no. Oh, it's in. Never mind. I take mm-hmm. it back. Like, so there's, the shot selections definitely have to be a little bit better, but. Um, I mean, 45%, 40% from three, 81 from the charity stripe. They got a yeah, free throw shoot that. team. Emmanuel Ogbo me too. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that was what I was going to talk about as another positive, the free throw shooting. Uh, two for two from Davis, two for three from Harper, five for seven from Bailey, two for two from Ogbole, two for two from Durkak, three for three from Hayes, two for three from Martini. So it's pretty solid. And they shot nine for 10 in the second half as well, which I know was kind of a big sticking point. It seemed like they always struggled, you know, later on in games as it went on, but they went nine for 10 mm-hmm. in the second half. So pretty impressive. All right, let's pivot to some negatives. Uh, man, they were not good in the paint defensively. They allowed 22 offensive rebounds. Um, they allowed 46 <clears throat> points in the paint, 25 second chance points. Yeah. This is something that, you can get better at by being collectively better at boxing out or, you know, crashing the boards. But last night that was just not there. Um, the amount of times where St. John's was able to like get one, two, three attempts at a tip in after a bad mm-hmm. shot because the Rutgers did force them to take a lot of tough shots, but it was the second chance stuff that really killed us fouls. I, I thought there was a lot of like, there, it was a pretty loose whistle last night. I felt, mm. um, St. John's attempted 34 free throws to just 22 for Rutgers. Um, some of that's on us. You know, we got to clean that up. You know, Dylan had four fouls. Jeremiah Williams had four fouls. It seems like a lot of guys were in foul trouble. So I think between cleaning up the fouls and cleaning up the rebounding, that's th- those are my two big takeaways. Alec, what is uh, something that you took away from this game that needs to, to get Im- improvement? Yeah, obviously the rebounding. I mean, Zubi Ejiofor, the transfer from Kansas, he had 13 rebounds. Ten of them were on the offensive glass. It felt like he was just getting in good position every single time and getting extra mm-hmm. shots. He had 27 points as well. He had a tremendous game. I mean, in the second half alone, he had 19 points and four offensive rebounds. Um, so that definitely needed to change. I think Agbole looks improved, but still not where I think he needs to be as a Big Ten starting center. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, he played 21 minutes. We saw a lot of Martini at the five. I don't know how often we'll actually see that as it goes on um, in the season. But, you know, I, I feel like we might see that a little bit more than we, we thought going into. Um, yep. Other things, I mean, they just kind of got uh, they just kind of got gassed, I think, at the end. I mean, St. John's, that is a veteran-led team. Granted, a lot of them are transfers, but they have a lot of college basketball experience. Um so I think that's just, you know, they, they, they ended the game on a 14-2 to two run over the last three and a half minutes. So, um, it, yeah, it just felt like the offense got kind of stagnant at times. They only had 11 assists on 29 midfield goals. Um, now, again, of course, it's still a preseason exhibition. So the guys are still finding their roles, finding each other in the sets. So that's probably going to fix itself as the season goes on. Um, but, yeah, 46 points in the paint. Uh, that's over half their points coming in the paint. So definitely have to uh, fix that up. Uh, didn't see a ton of uh, Lathan Somerville on defense. Great, he did only play seven minutes, so that's kind of still the jury still out on on how he looks. Um, but yeah, the interior defense definitely definitely has to pick it up a little bit, and they they struggle at the start too. Like they went on that incredible twenty two zero run, but Rutgers mm-hmm. really did struggle to start out. Both teams struggled to shoot, but uh, St. John's was getting a lot of rebounds even at the start as well. And a lot of that run was kind of sparked by Kadari Richmond uh, getting into some foul trouble in the first half and coming yeah. out for a while. And you can tell just how important Kadari uh-huh. Richmond is to that team because once he came out, the wheels just kind of fell off, and obviously Rutgers went on that massive run. Yeah, I, I mean, mean it, 
Uh, yeah, it was seventeen eight, and then seventeen thirty. <laughs> like what? Six minutes later, it was like it's insane, crazy run. But yeah, the interior presence on defense is just not there. Emmanuel Ogbo is nowhere near. I, I I think like I honestly say he understated it. Like he just did nothing. I thought there were so many situations. He did two things I thought he did well. I thought he was a good free throw shooter, of course, which is huge from a big man's uh, spot because he's probably going to get fouled a ton. Um, but on in, uh, in that one transition that Jordan Durkak passed, I thought the fact that he was able to catch it and actually go up with it was great. Every other time I saw him on offense, on defense, um, he gets the ball in the paint. He does. He just hesitates, doesn't know what to do, and he panics. And that's that's a product of him not playing basketball that much growing up. And it's also a product of uh, him just not developing really either. Now, Jay Young's there and it might help a little bit now, uh, but he's only been there for a couple months. I, I just, it's crazy to me that we didn't see more of Lathan Somerville. I feel like Lathan Somerville is just a smarter basketball player. He's more mature. I, I would have loved to see more of him on the defensive effort too. I know that's where he's kind of a little bit lackluster, but I just, it, it's, he needs to be ready. Like Lathan needs to be ready quicker than we thought. Um, it's a problem on the, on the boards. Emmanuel was getting pushed around by guys that were just skinnier than him. I think what was the center yeah. yesterday? Not not a not a Chukwu, the other guy. He was Pushy like four. Yeah, he he. We, we looked it up uh, during the game. I think he has like fifty pounds. Or Emmanuel has fifty pounds on him. They're the same I height, but Emmanuel has a fifty yeah, pound yeah. difference, and he's got yeah. muscle. You should not be getting bodied by someone that's that skinny. Like yeah. <laughs> push this guy around. I've seen him. I saw him boxing out. Mm-hmm. Ghost, there was one rebound late game that really cost him the game, honestly, where Emmanuel got the ball and it almost was like he handed it to the defender and it was like, here, you can go up. It's your basket, not mine. Like, no, dude, like I, I need him to be an enforcer down there. That's his, that is his role. That's his, it's supposed to be his niche. Like he needs to do something better, everything better, honestly. Um, on top of that, the other negative that I, I really took away was um, Jordan Durkak, and and I loved him. I thought I love hustle guys. I love, love all around effort guys. Great defender. He's on the floor nonstop, diving for balls, getting steals. But th- between him and Jamichael Williams, stop attacking the rim. Like you're getting double. Jamichael Williams. Jer- uh, Jer- uh, yeah, I keep messing them up. Jamichael Davis, not <clears throat> Jeremiah Williams. Okay. Um, uh, what do you call it? They just kept attacking the rim despite them being collapsed on every single time, and they're still going up. It's like, dude, you got to pass that out. If you're getting collapsed on, someone's yeah. wide open. You have PJ Hayes, a shooter, Zach Martini, a shooter. They want Harper shot a lot of threes, to be honest. Um, and that, that was supposed to be the worst part of his game, but he looked pretty good doing it. Um, Ace Bailey, a shooter. Like, you have so many shooters. If you're getting collapsed on, someone's open. Don't go up yep. on two guys because how many times did we see like, whether – Maybe it wasn't even resulting in fouls. It was just block after block or jump ball and block and it's turnover. And it's like, Oh my God. So there are a lot of flaws with this team still. I think that this is actually a very good St. John's team. I know they weren't ranked in AP top 25. I think they were 27, but they're also very lengthy. That's like a team that Pico would have loved to coach just because of that length. Um, they have one guy that's six foot. The rest of their team is six, four and above. And wow. most of the guys that were out there yesterday were six, 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 seven, six, eight, six, seven, six, 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 seven. And obviously their big men are six ten and seven foot one. But for the most part, like it's just a lengthy team. They're a very talented program. And the fact that Rutgers was able to well, should have probably beat them, uh, but kept up with them scoring wise is really impressive. Um, but overall I do think there's a lot of flaws that still have to be fixed and rotations, interior post uh, defense or post presence in general. Um, because like even when Martini came in, like Martini's not big enough to guard these big ten guys going forward. And that's why you saw Ace, like, Martini was in as the center. Ace was sitting in the paint just trying to defend the paint because the, the Martini can't really defend the paint. Like, he can go and put up, put a little muscle against people. Like, he's an a, a all-around hustle effort guy too, but there's only so much you can do at 6'7", 210, 220 versus a 7-footer that's the same weight as you. <laughs> like, it's, it's tough. But I do think they have to figure out that big man spot. That's, that's my biggest um, negative, I should say. I think my <clears throat> biggest negative that hasn't been talked about yet is just kind of how they fell apart down the stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, final seven minutes of the game, uh, Rutgers was up <clears throat> 79 to 70 with six minutes and 50 seconds left. St. John's goes on a 21 to six run to close mm-hmm. the game out. Rutgers goes two for nine shooting over that, t- that stretch. They commit, uh, they turn, turn the ball over four times during that stretch. It was just like, Time after time, they would just, you know, find a way to make a bad pass or a bad shot. So down the stretch, when you are fatigued, 
you know, when you're dealing with foul trouble, I just think as a team, they, nobody handled that situation well from, you know, the guys who are playing in their fifth or sixth year of college ball to their guys playing their first. So I think that is where, uh, where Spike will, will have the most effective uh, coaching um, over the next few weeks is mm-hmm. getting end game situations cleaned up. Uh, I know it's just one game and I know we kind of have to maybe overemphasize what we saw um, a little more than we probably would have normally for a regular season game. But overall, I think way more positives than negatives coming out of this. Yeah. Um, but this is a team that <clears throat> they're going to have to figure out the big man situation was my mm-hmm. biggest takeaway because I don't think like, like you guys said that Agbole is going to be able to hold up for, you know, more than half the game. Mm-hmm. I think Martini just isn't built like a big 10 center. So it's going to be tough for him to hold up and Lathan Somerville is still young. So, you know, Jay young, you can go make your money, man, figure this situation out. Yeah. Uh, get these guys ready to play because right now uh, their big man situation, especially when they play against multiple talented guys, like they did against St. John's, like St. John's was the perfect opponent to play the scrimmage against mm-hmm. because of the guys that they have personnel wise, because of all the experience they have, like there's not going to be many teams you face with this much experience in terms of the number of college minutes that they've collectively played on that roster. So mm-hmm. just a great event, great time, great game. Like there's going to be even more excitement for regular season games. So I'm just, this is like the perfect antidote to the failing football season, not failing, <laughs> but the football season that has certainly lost yeah. a lot of its luster uh, is this basketball team that, uh, you know, it, I, they, they, in my opinion, they exceeded my expectations last night with mm-hmm. how they, they, they played the game overall. Going back to that, that late game, like collapse, basically. Um, I guess we could call it that because they were yeah. up nine with six minutes left. I think that's more of like you just said, it's the youth versus the experience. Like mm-hmm. when you have two young guys out there and they're chucking and, and a, lot of guys, a lot of these guys also, I, you can't even say they're not gelling because other teams brand new too, but it's just that experience issue at the end. Like you saw the, like the lazy pass at, I think it was the second to last possession for St. John's. It was just a lazy pass to basically just put the game away. Um, yeah. Cause I think they were down four and then they had the ball and it was just a lazy pass at mid court. And it just, the guy just read it perfectly, got the steal fast break and there you go points for St. John's. And that was it basically. I think it, I think it might've been when they were down two actually, when that came in. It might have been that too. I, and then I think, right. or maybe it was when they were down two and Dylan got stripped. Because that also that was also one of the late possessions. Um, um, yeah, and then that basically put the game away. Defense block, block rebound. Steal. Where's the steal? Yeah, you were right. It was down. No, down three. Yeah, down. Made free throw from Katari Richmond. Personal foul. J. Mike steal. Bad. Foul. Yeah. No. Okay. I'm sorry. It was down four. It was 89, 85, and then um, it was just a bad pass. Um, and just Katari Richmond read it like a book. And yeah. And I will say, I mean, he 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 backed up well. He he didn't have his best game. He is actually pretty good. He had nine, nine, and six. So maybe triple double watch. But he. He backed mm-hmm. up his comments earlier this week, so uh, I guess yeah. I guess props to him. I, we kind of doubted it because he lost last year to Rutgers, but mm-hmm. hey, they came out with the win. He backed it up. Yeah. Um, I had a great time. I got way better seats than I normally would have. Um, I was in like 105, row E. Man, that is a totally different uh, <laughs> ball game than sitting in the 300s. Um, it's, it's funny, like, the stuff you hear from the coaches that close to. Like, I feel like mm-hmm. you're just way more part of the game. Um, November 6th, game one of this mm-hmm. regular season. Uh, I knew Steve Peichel was talking about after the game. Um, I guess we could talk about that, what, what was said after the game. You know, he's got three weeks to get this team going and, you know, pointing in the right direction. He seems really upbeat after the mm-hmm. game. Like normally he's crushed after a loss. I get that it's a, a scrimmage, but like, I don't think I've, I, I think I've seen Steve Peichel less happy during win press conferences than the press conference yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rick Patino was super complimentary about uh, Rutgers compared uh, Dylan Harper to Clyde Drex or Clyde, okay. Clyde Frazier, Clyde Frazier, geez. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said that Ace Bailey is incredibly talented. Um, what were some of the things said after the game that surprised you or you thought were standout, uh, Rich? We'll start with you. Um, I mean, he, he knows 
that they're not rebounding well. He mentioned that. I, I found it interesting that he – this is a guy that, mind you, in preseason a couple of years ago was hyping up his team, saying this is the greatest team he's ever coached, this and that. And it was almost the complete opposite because like, when, when asked about the rebounding, he said he's like, we haven't been even rebounding well in practices, which mm. definitely stands out. I think he realizes that there is an issue at that, at that five spot. Um, it's going to have to be a team effort when it comes to rebounding. It's because if I, I can't imagine Emmanuel averaging double digit rebounds, yeah. and that's kind of what you need from a big man spot. But if you're not getting that, you need an all around effort. We need Dylan rebounding, which he, he got his boards. I think he had four or five. Ace had five, or vice versa. One of them had five, one had four. So you need those guys to rebound. You need the guards to rebound. You need Dirk Hack out there rebounding. You need more, you need more martini minutes to be getting rebounds. Um, and I thought actually he looked pretty good. Um, even though he wasn't getting rebounds, and I said this when the when they got him, he's just a good box out guy. Like he knows exactly where to throw a body on someone, or it will always put a body on someone, I should say. Um, but you need an all around effort there. Um, I know it's tough for like guys like PJ Hayes, who are usually probably going to be outside the arc, so it's hard for them to get rebounds uh, for the most part. But I, I need a little bit of hustle there. I need I need everyone on this team to have at least like two rebounds a game minimum, if not three. Um, and I know that's not asking for much, but when you don't have a big man that's going to get double digits and you have Ace who's probably going to get you like five, six a game maybe, you need more from the rest of the guys. Um, but he uh, he also wasn't happy that they gave up 90 points, of course. But, I mean, what what coach would in college sure. basketball? <laughs> yeah, I, I will say he was, he was pretty upbeat. Um, I mean, like you said, Mike, I mean, I had seen him – less upbeat after after a win sometimes in Big Ten play. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just saying, like, how great everyone's been. Um, you know, they're, they're coming together. He did say that things, you know, kind of need to, to change. And when it comes to rebounding, I'm kind of curious how – we didn't see Bryce Dortch or Dylan Grant at all last night. I'm kind of curious how they mm -hmm. factor in. Now, I don't think they'll get a ton of minutes, but mm -hmm. those are kind of those, like, lengthy, bouncy guys that can it, it not it, it do nothing else but give a lot of effort in the rebounding game. Um, so I'm wondering how they'll factor in at, at certain points, whether they can play the four at times. Um, I guess we'll have to see. And that kind of segues into Pykele's post game as well. I thought Craig asked a really good question of, you know, because it's a scrimmage or exhibition and it doesn't really count on the record, how do you manage, you know, experimenting with different things with your team versus, you know, mm -hmm. I want to go out and win this game. And I think Pykele said something along the lines of like, you know, obviously we want to see everyone mesh into their roles, but at a certain point, like those competitive juices start flowing and <laughs> they, they tried to, they tried to win that game and, and they came up short, but uh, it was a pretty good insight into, you know, what the, the thought process is and how, <laughs> you know, how things are going to mesh out as the preseason goes on until the season really starts. Um, Jordan Durkak also had seven rebounds, so I think he's going to be another one of those guys that's going to be relied upon mm -hmm. more for his defense and rebounding than just than offense. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good question, and I'm not really sure how they're going to mesh it out, but they're going to have to at some point. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> it, I was surprised that Dorchin – and Grant didn't get in a single minute, but yeah. like Pike said, once the competitive juices start flowing, you kind of just want to go for the win. And I think that's more valuable than just kind of like playing it like uh, like a little league thing. It's like, oh, we're, we're up by one, but we got to get Johnny in. Like, not that, not, I don't want to, I'm not CYO saying this. The four minute subs. Yeah, I'm not trying to say this to like put anybody down. I just mean like, it's way mm -hmm. more valuable to be in a crunch time situation and actually try and like, this is the kind of scenarios you're going to see in games this year. And so mm -hmm. it's way more valuable to just play it like it's a regular game and then learn from it rather than be like, yeah, in a regular game, we would have done this, but we wanted to get some guys some minutes. It's like, okay. Um, well, it's interesting too. Cause like rotation wise, it was three guards for the entire game. I know yep. Dylan's guard six, six guard. So, I mean, he can, he's, he was guarding the three yesterday, basically. Um, so like, is that going to be the rotation going forward? Or did you do that for the sole fact that this was a St. John's team that has a little bit more speed? It's a big East team. So that's always most of the, most of the big East teams, if not all of them run three guard sets. So is that going to be a go like this, the, the rotation going forward, or are you going to switch back to like a more natural, like two guard ace of the three as a wing martini out there. And then you can get more grant and Dorch minutes because I mean, ace dominated the four spot. Um, minute wise and spent played what 37 minutes so i mean that's like essentially yeah. the whole game <laughs> like yeah i don't know if we'll be seeing those kind of minutes uh from him maybe we will who knows yeah we'll see um overall like i said really uh 
really positive developments from this game. Really excited to kind of see how the rest of the season plays out. That we kind of beat it to death, though. Unless do you guys have anything else, I'm gonna call this one. Um, All I got is have... it's it's I that was fun, really. That that's like what it boils yeah. down to. It's mm-hmm. a lot of fun, and yeah. it's good to have college basketball back. Yeah, that was more fun than any Rutgers game I watched last year. Maybe what was the game where Gavin scored like 30 points? That, that might... was Boston. That was Boston University. That was like the second or third game of the season. That was the even the only the only game that even came close to like the level of fun that that game was. Um, and Northwestern was fun just for a different reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so ahead of college basketball season starting, we are doing a giveaway. giveaway. Um, we're giving away two high school replica jerseys of the freshman studs of Ace Bailey and Dylan Harper. Um, in order to get in on this giveaway, there's two ways. The first and most preferred way is to go to your Apple Podcast app, give us a five-star review, mention Rutgers Madness in your review, and you'll be entered with two entries. Or uh, you can leave a comment on this video below mentioning Rutgers Madness, and you'll be entered for one entry. Um, just our way of giving back to you guys. We'll be doing the giveaway prior to the November 6th game. We also are planning to have on a few basketball guests ahead of the season starting. Um, Just tease that a little bit, uh, talk about this team. But for me and Richie and Alec, this has been another edition of the Night Report podcast signing off.